In this video, we are going to solve a couple of uh, polynomial inequalities. So um, the first step to solving an inequality is to find the zeros or x-intercepts of the function. So I'm going to imagine that this function is uh, equal to zero instead of an inequality. And I'm going to solve this and see what those critical values are. So, now there's two ways to find the zeros of this function. One way would be to factor this. Um, this is the difference of two cubes, and so it's one of those special cases that uh, we have memorized in the past. When you factor the sum or difference of two cubes, it always factors as a binomial and then a trinomial. And uh, so the binomial is just the cube root of these, so that would be x minus 2. Um, and then to get the trinomial, you square these, um, so that's going to give you x squared and then positive 4. And then for the middle, you multiply these, but you take the opposite sign. So it'll be positive 2x. So now I've just factored it. Um, now, to find the actual zeros of the function, I need to set each of these equal to zero and solve. So, um, yeah, if I set x minus 2 equal to zero, and if I set um, x squared plus 2x plus 4 equal to zero, um, then I would get the zeros. Now, I'm um, setting this equal to zero, I'm going to get x equals 2. So that's a, a critical value. Now, um, <coughs> This will never be factorable. When you factor the, uh, the difference or sum of two cubes, this trinomial, you're not going to be able to factor it. So the only thing you could do would be to use the quadratic formula. Um, but I can tell you now that these solutions are always going to be imaginary. Um, you know, if, if I went to do my b squared minus 4ac, uh, the first step of the quadratic formula, it's going to be 2 squared minus 4 times 1 times 4. So that's going to wind up being 4 minus 16, which is negative 12. The fact that that's negative tells me that I'm going to have imaginary solution, solutions. OK, because I'm going to wind up with um, negative 2 plus or minus the square root of negative 12 all over 2a, uh, negative under a radical, that's imaginary. And that's important because imaginary values will not show up on a number line in a moment where I'm looking for the uh, x-intercepts. Okay, so um, I really only have one critical value. All right, it's the only one. Like Tigger. I don't know if you guys are familiar with Winnie the Pooh and Tigger, but this <laughs> is the only one. So um, I will take my positive 2 and graph it on a number line as my only critical value. So there it is. Now I mentioned that there were two ways that I could have done this. Um, the other way is like this. So let me go back to this point for a second. I think I'll change colors. So x to the third power minus 8 equals 0. So here's the other way I could have done it. I could have gotten x by itself by adding 8 to both sides. So that would give me x to the third power is equal to 8. And then it would be a matter of taking the uh, cube root of both sides. All right, there's no plus or minus when you do an odd root. And then it turns out that the cube root of 8 is 2. So I wind up with x is equal to 2. All right, so if I only want the real uh, solutions, then this is probably the easiest way to do it. If I ever needed the imaginary solutions as well, um, then I would want to do it by factoring like this. Because uh, notice that this method does not give me those imaginary solutions. It only gives me the real solutions. All right, anyway, let's continue with the process. 
So now that I've got the critical value, uh, I need to decide if it should be graphed as an open circle or a closed circle. Will it be uh, included or not? So 2 is the value that makes the function equal to 0. We want the values where the function is greater than or equal to 0. So the, um, the critical value of 2 should be included. So I'm going to draw it as a closed circle. Now I need test values in each zone, meaning to the left and to the right. To the left of 2, I could use um, 0, for example. To the right of 2, I could use 3 or 4 or 5. I'm going to use 4. So these will be my two test values. OK, so let's see the value of the function at these values to see if they are greater than or equal to 0. So I'm going to put the function in my calculator. And I think I'm just going to clear this out while I'm in here. Fresh start and all that. So um, I need x to the third power minus 8. All right, make sure you're in ask mode. All right, and the two values I want to see are 0 and 4. So I'll put in 0 and 4. <clears throat> so I get negative 8 and 56. So negative 8 and 56. So remember, the question is, um, where is the function greater than or equal to 0? So is this greater than or equal to 0? And is this greater than or equal to 0? Um, well, that's a no. Negative 8 is not greater than or equal to 0. Negative numbers are less than 0. But 56 is greater than 0. So that means that 4 is a solution to the inequality because we're getting a true statement. That means all of the values to the right of 2 will be solutions to the inequality. And uh, there won't be any solutions over here to the left. So writing this um, in interval notation, the solutions go from 2 to positive infinity. So I will write 2 to positive infinity like this. And I'll use a square bracket um, to include the endpoint of 2. You know, same meaning as a closed circle. And infinity always gets a round parentheses. Um, so that's it for problem number three. All right, problem number four is the same type of thing. Um, in all the uh, previous problems, we already had zero on one side. So before we get started, we should add one to both sides in order to get zero on one side. So we are dealing with um, x to the third power minus 4x plus 1 is greater than 0. That's what we are actually dealing with. Um, now, so the first step is uh, we need to find the zeros of this function so we can have those critical values, those x-intercepts, to uh, break up our number line into zones. Um, this is not going to be factorable. I can tell because it's a cubic and uh, you know there's no common factor doesn't fit any of our patterns so it's unfactorable so um, as I try to set this equal to zero and solve which is how you find the zeros of a function I'm going to have to use my calculator and um, synthetic division so let's go ahead and type this function into the table feature of the TI30XS multi-view. So we have x to the third power minus 4x plus 1. So um, right now my calculator is in ask mode because of um, what I was doing on the last problem. But now I need to be back in auto mode for this problem. 
So I'm going to start at negative 10 because the zeros rarely go past negative 10. All right, so I'm just going to scroll down looking for zero on the y side. Uh-oh. Okay, so I just noticed my zeros going by. See, I, I, it went from negative 2 to positive 1. No zeros there. And it went from uh, negative 14 to positive 1. That's where the zeros would have been. Uh, but they're not showing up. So, which means that they are probably, you know, irrational or something. Um, you know, they're, they're probably decimals that I can't see. All right, so I'm going to have to use uh, some sort of other technology, a graphing calculator or a computer. So that's what you're going to need for this problem. All right, my favorite graphing software is Desmos.com. And uh, you can either just go to um, Desmos.com, the website, or if you're using your phone or other device, there's an app, a Desmos app. Okay, um, so I'm just going to type in the equation, x to the third power minus 4x plus 1. Okay, so I've got x, and I want to go to the third power. Um, so minus 4x plus 1 x to the third power minus 4x plus 1. Just double checking because sometimes I forget. So there is our function. So we need to know what the x-intercepts are. And as you can see, if I sort of highlight them, if I hover over them, it's telling me what they are. So I've got negative 2.1. And you know what? I better just write them down one at a time. So. Um, so my x-intercepts are negative 2.1 and I've got another one here at point, 0.3 I'll round up because it's a 5 after that so 0 0.3 and I've got one more over here at 1.9 I'll round up because of the 6 All right, so no wonder why they weren't showing up on the calculator, but um, using our technology, we, we're still able to find it. So you could use your phone for this. All right, so if you're taking a test in school and you're not allowed to use your phone, so you would have to use a graphing calculator. Okay, um, so anyway, let's take these values and put them on the number line. Okay, and so um, we will graph these critical values, these x-intercepts, as dots. And um, this time, we want to know where the function is greater than 0, but not equal to. So um, these are the points where the function equals 0. So they are not to be included. So we're going to use open circles to represent them. So um, state it as a rule. If you have a greater than sign like this, then it's an open circle. If it had been, for example, greater than or equal to, then you would have had a closed circle. All right, so we need a test value in each one of these zones. So um, to the left of negative 2.1, we could use negative 3. Between negative 2.1 and 0 0.3, we could use zero. Zero is in there. Um, between 0.3 and 1.9 um, is the number one, so we could use one. Uh, beyond 1.9 is, uh, you know, two or three. Um, so I think I'll just do, I'll just do three. Okay. So these are the values uh, that I'm going to test. And remember, I'm testing to see if they are 
in fact greater than zero because that would make um, them solutions to this inequality. So greater than zero, yes or no. So back to the calculator. All right, it seems the equation is already typed into my calculator from my earlier attempt. So that's already done. I am going to switch the calculator back to ask mode real quick, just so I don't have to scroll around so much. Okay, so I'm testing negative three and zero. Okay, so, so far that gives me negative 14 and one. All right, and we're asking, are these values greater than zero or not? So I'd like to put a question mark on there to show that we're asking, is this true? Um, is negative 14 greater than zero? Nope, it's a negative number. That's less than zero. Is one greater than zero? Yes, it is. It is a positive number, greater than zero. Now let's check one and positive three. All right, so we get negative two and 16. So is negative two greater than zero? Um, no. Is 16 greater than zero? Yes. So the yeses indicate solutions to the inequality. So we will show that um, all of the other solutions must be in this zone by drawing a segment. And uh, we'll draw an arrow in this zone to show that this is where all of the other solutions will be. Um, notice wherever it says no, we draw nothing because there are no solutions there. So this is a graph of our solution set, um, but we are to record our solutions in interval notation as well. So our solutions are going from negative 2.1 to 0 0.3, approximately, you know, whatever that was. Um, so we've got negative 2.1 to 0 0.3 notice I'm using parentheses not square brackets to show that we're not including the endpoints union and 1.9 to infinity again round parentheses okay so that would be the answer to number four